well, making uh, from a lemon a lemonade <laughs> and taking all these questions into consideration, I would like to welcome everybody here. And uh, I'm very excited to be in Israel for my first time. And uh, we bring some different uh, things uh, on technique details and tips and pitfalls. But that is uh, from a different and from the same perspective of, uh, as the family, Ponsetti is everywhere. And we've been connected and we've been working together. So we invite everyone to, to this group and to be criticizing and participating. And then we make a lot of progress together. So I come from the State Hospital of Sao Paulo, which is a, it's a general hospital. And uh, I'm at the head of the children's uh, department, the children's orthopedics. Well, Taking out these questions into consideration, yes, the prenatal visit is very important. So more and more families are coming to you without the baby, and the baby is in the belly, and then you have more attention from the mom, which is a good idea, because you, when she is with the baby, you divide like a, the, the mom take about 30% of what you, what you explain, but uh, if the baby is there, quiet, and a very well comfort, and she will be, pay more attention. And that will be mom and dad and grandma and people are interested and that's a great experience. It's a great educational moment that will take you to uh, the best result once everybody's prepared. So that's a good idea. So uh, at, at the bottom there, the deformity is your friend. Why, why is that? Because the deformity will be the reason for the family to follow all your instructions. So don't be uh, too uh, uh, anxious to finish with the deformity because it's important that the family understands what's going on. It was a very difficult deformity to deal with for many, many years. So just because we're able to tackle it in four or five weeks, that it doesn't mean that we don't have to uh, give the the attention and the importance of the, the whole treatment, seen as not just putting on some casts, but doing it from the beginning to not at the four years of age, but even more than that, as we're gonna discuss. So the families will be better prepared. They will have real expectations. So would my uh, children's foot will be normal. No, it's not normal. There's a difference. There'll be, if it's unilateral, there will be this difference, but it's not uh, going to, to uh, prevent to do sports and do something. So real expectations. I think this is very positive. So in Latin countries, we also have to not play the paternalistic approach, which is very common in our society. So the doctor will take care, so don't worry. No, that's not a good thing in this treatment because you have to delegate, you have to, to be together so, and not being able to put a burden on the family and as, as well because that's not the case. So it's a good treatment, got good results, so let's work together. So it's a good opportunity we have. So again, with this baby, it's not a good idea for you to begin the treatment because I mean, first you get the, the correction very early. So that, that's what we just say. And you have any, uh, many more issues to take care. So if you consider the weight, some of the babies are just, you know, need a very good weight control. So the guest is about 120, 150 uh, grams. So it's, it could be like a 10% of the, the weight of the baby. So it's a lot. So it's very difficult to deal with that. Some of the venous uh, accesses, so, if the legs are all covered, and also for jaundice, or, or to organize the breastfeeding. So the guests don't, don't have to be there, doesn't have to be there for the first or the second day. So in this, from the baby point of view, from the mom point of view, I'm a mom. So in the first week, useless, <laughs> because mom could not pay attention to anything else than to take care of your hormone storm and to be able to, to get to know your kid and to, to start breastfeeding, all these challenges. And so you don't have to put the cast together with that. So uh, it's a good idea to wait a little bit. So I think there's no difference between uh, one or two or three weeks. Families are very anxious to, to get rid of the deformity, that's true, but from the, the other way, 
you have problems with it. We have much, much more problems with the uh, adaptation of the brace, and that can ruin your, the second phase. So that's very important. So you all know those pictures. To make the family understand, and I, I, there was a, a night in there saying, tell the whole story to the family. And the whole story begins with, that's a developmental deformity. That's not created when the ovula meets the, the, the spermatozoid. Not at this moment, but during the, the developing in uterus, that means that the biological influence that had in the, after the third month of pregnancy is still there when the child is born, and is still there when you finish your treatment. So you have to, to, to battle that, you have to fight that. Uh, until it's safe. When it's safe? Well, after four years of age, it's pretty safer. So it, it's one uh, relapse in a 10, but we'll still have some children that will be fighting for many, many other years. And you have to tell the families that that, that could be possible because otherwise they will just burn the brace at the fourth anniversary and that's not a good idea because you may need the brace after that. So it's not a positional uh, issue, so you have to explain all those uh, issues to the family and all the biological forces that will bring the food again into the, the relapse. And you tell the family that the relapse will be treated with uh, the same treatment, so why to, do, to go there twice or three times? So let's just go one time. And after the biology is controlled, there are still some uh, relapsed forces into the growth of the child. Because before we didn't talk very much about that, but nowadays the treatment is not over at four years of age. Because there's a difference in the soft tissues as we know. The so muscle uh, quantity is less on the club foot from if you compare to the other side. And that means from the, the beautiful work of Hippolyto, and you, that they measure the quantity, quantify the, the soft tissues. And rel relative to the muscle, there's more tissues that do not stretch. So fascia and ligaments, and very difficult to stretch. And so they accommodate much worse the growth of the child. So if the child has a growth spurt, could be a problem on those kids. So not all kids, but some, some of those, that could be a problem. Another tip is like when you teach the technique, everybody knows that we have to put the, the, the finger on the, the lateral part of the head of the talus. Okay, but you go on the residency and you check how many of the residents know where the talus is. <laughs> Not a lot, it's amazing because the, the, the finger will just fall into the sinus tarsi, they fall into the anterior part of tuberosity of the calcaneus very, very often, most often than we, we would think. And if you train them to look for the tailor head on the continuity of the tibia instead of in front of the fibula will be more successful in teaching because uh, if they go anterior to the fibula, there will be sinostarsi again, anterior tuberosity of the calcaneus. So it's very easy if you tell them to just to follow the tibia because then the only little ball that could be there should be the talus. So that's a, a nice tip. And try not to produce a complex foot. Okay, I'll tell you that's very easy to produce, produce a complex food. If you go too fast, if you don't uh, correct the cables right, if you don't model well, it, there's many of the, the recipe that you can end up with this gross complex food. So we try to avoid that, and how? So taking very much attention into these points of molding, okay? Everybody knows from the book uh, where your finger must be, but not a lot about molding. People are forgetting about molding. If you study the, the conservative treatment of fractures, we know that it's going worse and worse in the, in the teaching schools because nobody knows how to mold it well anymore because they do a lot of surgical uh, intramedullary treatment of fractures and this is kind of lost. So if you don't 
want your food to be a ball, don't mold it as a ball. So if you don't want your tibia to be curved, don't mold the tibia curved. So the champion cast, as we, as we ad advertise for the courses, mean that the anterior part of the foot is triangular, if you look from the lateral. Uh, means that the, f the, the toes must be aligned and well uh, uh, with, the, with the plantar surface and not cut there where they we allow for flexion. So you have to be able to see the whole, the, the, the five toes. So you have to mold it very well, the tie. So nobody takes a very good attention on that. It has to be flat, because if it's not flat, there, you don't have a catch on from the plantar to the, to the tie. And before, we, we used to say that it's a good idea to do like a pterygian kind of cast and to flex more than 90 degrees, but actually you mold it very well if you do 90 degrees, if you mold it very well, the popliteal fossa. So a lot of tricks that make these uh, pictures on the right uh, disappear from your practice, which is a good idea. <laughs> so if you have these rounded casts, so you take the cast off and, and surprise, surprise, the leg is exactly like that. So those are beautiful drawings from Javier Doni from Sevilla, Spain. And he explained this in a very, very nice way. If you mold it, just the leg will just follow the shape of your model. So that was done by me, <laughs> this beautiful curved tibia. And I, that was in 2002. And I was trying to figure out what that, why that happened. It was an hydrogrypotic kid, but it doesn't matter. It just means that it's it's tight, and you have to really pay attention not to this to occur. And you can get out of this, just molding and redoing your treatment. So those are uh, Jose's uh, slides and on details how to cut exactly the position of the the toes very with a good support and up to the tide. So if you don't go up to the tide. Uh, in, a, in a two minutes, it will be on the half of the tie, and that, that's not a good, good catch, uh, catch, not a good catch of the leg. And also from him, uh, from Iowa, and those are horrible pictures you'll never uh, want to see, and uh, ulcers and points, and you see all these toes together just because you didn't stretch them and align them on the cast. So it's very easy to do that and in a practice. So those are beautiful legs and feet that we <laughs> get from the dissemination of the Poncelli method. So that, that's what we're fighting against. This is really uh, not being able to explain the details and hand to hand and explaining how you do the technique properly because every, all these doctors had done courses and that's the problem because you, you just throw the pulsating method and you think that you don't have to be uh, careful. Rock a bottom foot, so you can cause a rock a bottom foot if you don't abduct. So if you're not abducted enough, you stuck and then the foot begins to go dorsal, only the, the, uh, the forefoot and the hind foot won't go. So you have to undo it, to re, uh, rewind, and then to go again into plantar flexion to be able to bring the whole foot up together in abduction. If you don't do abduction, that's a problem. And if you start seeing the lateral crease, stop the abduction, that means that the, only the, the forefoot is going the, and the hind foot is not going. So you have to be able to, to lead the whole foot. That means that's a, a more rigid foot and you have to be able to abduct just a little bit. And if you have this uh, crease and you stop and you take care and you really uh, undo the, the, the crease, you'll be able to have this crease to disappear very soon. Well, there's a, this paper from Chile that shows that if you take the cast off at the clinic place, and so you have less time outside the cast, you, you are faster in your correction. How much? The double. So it's very nice to have less casts and less uh, hassle on, the, on the, the cast phase of the treatment if you do it 
take the cast off in the clinic, or with water, or drying, or any, any way you can think of comfortable to the babies. Well, tenotomy. So first thing, be sure the food is ready, okay? When the food is ready, so no virus, okay? Good abduction. So you have to be able to say, okay, it's 70 degrees, so the food is ready. So don't do tenotomy before that, so that's important. So local and, and general, always the same uh, discussion, but if you go local, you can be more uh, adjustable to your, to your treatment, so it's easier. Simply, you, you can just uh, realize that the food is ready and you do the tenotomy. You don't have to schedule, don't have to ask for the codes, you don't have to wait, you don't have to be requesting or uh, requesting the, this, child, this child and being able to uh, deal with some of the clinical problems, uh, ventilational problems, not a very good weight. So, and after you do the tenotomy, papers will be talking about complications of doing on the local. Just compress. If you don't, just stay looking at the, the blood is on the wall, of course, okay? So just compress. You don't have to see anything. It's a feeling sense. Even if you are in the OR, you're not, uh, you're not gonna open and, and spread. It, you don't gonna see the tendon. It's a sensation. So it has to be done very safely and it's okay to do it under local eyes. They've been doing in Iowa for years. And of course, you have to cast it well, not to lose your correction. If you cast it because the, the, the child is in a hassle and, it, and you just put the cast in, the, in your apprehensive, you lose your tenotomy. So I think there is sound. But I just did this, this video to a, a Brazilian meeting to show that uh, there's a, the baby. Uh, singing a little bit, just to show it's not a panacea, okay? So you do it emla cream or not, and you do a little bit of local anesthetic, so you have to be sure that the tailor's head is covered. It have to be, uh, it's a little softer, so the, the hind foot, uh, pirani score is not resolved yet, but we have to have good abduction. So if you do in a clinical setup, you don't have to, to do uh, a lot of uh, preparation to that, but you have to have a helper that knows what's going on. You can have the family there or not, but it's good for the child, and the next minute you finish, he's already breastfeeding, so it's nice. And then you have to localize the tendon, as you see, so the local anesthetic will just mark where you're going with your, your knife, so you can see that it's very much lateral than it, it could, if somebody's not very well trained, it's not in the middle, so it's very lateral. And then you, you can tell from if this, the, the audio was uh, stronger that, that the child is kind of okay at this time because you let her go. And then you go again, so I'm changing the gloves because I do with this more or less a sterile uh, with the blade and then you go there, and you just go on the, on the point that you marked with your local, you see this little blood spot, and it's real time, so it's not edited, so that's why the one minute, one, 150. So it's not a lot of blood, it's not a lot of hassle, so the child is kind of comfortable with the mom sitting, everybody's sitting in the room, so no problem. So you see the point is there marked, and you go there. Some people do it, hold it, and do it the same, the same person, but I think it's very safe to do it this way because you see my thumb is there holding up on the lateral side, so the, the blade is not gonna be flying over. So it's done. So it, it doesn't take a while. So you really, uh, even if you are in the OR, it's the same, but it does, you need so many more people doing this. Anyway, catching up the how can you do the, the family to use the brace, okay, that's, I, more, I learned a lot from Spain and from the Latin countries. How do you convince the families? First, one, first thing, they don't have to think that the child is, uh, you know, prevented to do 
things. So this baby used to go around you kneeling and turning and doing crazy things with the brace. So it's not, we're not allowing them to, to walk because I think it's a kind of dangerous. In some countries they, they think it's a nice thing. We don't, we don't think so. Uh, but you, you bring, in each age, you have an idea to give the parents. So we do it every three months, the return visits. So in the first year, if you uh, customize the brace with a backyard guns or whatever they, the baby likes or something, it's, it's a point. If around one and a half, two, uh, give them a sense of uh, possession. So that's yours, that's not your brother, that's yours. So you, 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 you play with the things that are from the age that could be interesting. And from the families, uh, tell them when the brace is on, you do things that you don't do with the braces off. So uh, families that the TV is on the whole time, no, only in the brace time TVs, uh, tablets, and uh, some interaction games or something like that. When it's not there, it's ball, it's activity. So you have to divide the two, two moments for the child to have something to wait for with the brace on and without the brace. So the two moments are nice. Or to give the mom a, a moment to the child to put the boots on. Some of the families go there like a sacrifice to do that. And that's a bad thing. That's the beginning of the end. Because if they don't, if they believe they are hurting their child, this is not gonna happen. So at this moment, they sing a song, they do something that increases the attention of the mom to the child. So the child will wait for the mom to come because they will give more attention. So it's a little trick. And every age, they're different. So you have something to add on. And we as orthopedic surgeons, we're not very well trained on the, these issues, that's true. But as Jose said, in your interaction with the family, this will give a lot of strength in terms of the whole treatment and to keep going with this part, which is not less important. And the families think that the cast face is much more difficult than the brace. And that was, uh -huh, this cannot be true. But that's what they told me just in a questionnaire when I, I handed that at four years of age. So at four years of age, they fill in a form saying that they really don't think that the brace was a problem. Why? Because it was a routine. It's like uh, brushing their teeth of the, the kids or doing something that you are very well used to. And the cast, the child has the deformity, and it's difficult to bath, and you have all those problems. So cast is much more in the mind of the parents, even after four, is, four years of age, which is, was pretty striking for me. That's why this paper, I think it was nice to show. So, and all the families will recommend it again, and they uh, tell that the kids are uh, engaged in sports, different sports, so it's very uh, functional. So it's not, uh, a burden or a problem for these families. Of course, they come and they are well directed to cooperate, but if they don't, you turn them into this. And the other uh, tool that you can use is to, to put the parents to talk to the parents. So your word is important, but they talking to the, themselves is very, very important. So the, the societies and the associations of parents are very powerful in this convincing thing. Well, John is going to talk about brace, but it's just why the other braces don't don't uh, just don't work because they don't stretch the Achilles tendon. So we remember that remember that's a soft tissue problem. So if you don't stretch the whole uh, medial and posterior part of the thigh and the leg, it won't work. So if you put a, a under the knee thing and the child internally rotates, all the tension is gone. So you don't have it and you cannot stretch the Achilles if the knee is in flexion for some KA falls. And I don't know if you put this study in, but this study, I think it's one of the most important studies for the braces because it's one of the, the most scientifically uh, done one, even if it's not in vivo, because this uh, uh, gentleman, the uh, Gmail, is a father of a child with clubfoot, and 
constructed the um, a model in, in the uh, saw bones and put sensors into the ligaments and try to test three different braces. So the braces, uh, the, the strict brace, and tested the, the distances also and the turning of the bars. So he tested all the variables and the AFOs and the moving brace, that could be dubs brace or could be flexible, all kinds of flexible bars. Well, first he said there was no, there was uh, no stress in the knee, which was an important issue. Many people criticized the abduction brace because it will force the knee into valgus or external rotation. And because the tension goes up to the hip in external rotation, all the soft tissues are tensioned and not spe specifically the, the knee. That was in, an important finding. Well, there's a very nice study, but that's the, the most uh, important slide from the study that compares, as you see, all the colors mean the tensions, okay? And then, as you can see, from the, the first one is the strict, the, the, the brace that we use, the standard of care, which is fixed. Okay, and you see how the tension in the tendons and the, the muscles there are important. So uh, the soleus, the lateral gastrocnemius, and the T post, Okay, and if you compare with the AFO, the AFO ooh, drops down these values. And if you compare it with the flexible braces, they drops worse than the AFO. So I think that that highs, highlights a very important issue if you want to decide if you're gonna jump into the flexible braces that are very appealing in the market because they say that the, the child tolerates better and so on and so on. And the other, uh, Epidemia, that's my last slide, uh, it's like doing anterior tips on not corrected foot. From the hand surgery, from the transfer surgery, we know that all the transfer will just work if you have a flexible joint. So if you don't have a flexible joint, don't do anterior tip transfer because all you have is a club foot with a transfer that's done very weak if you salvage them, because you can salvage them. I'm gonna talk in a, in a big meeting in, in Tel Aviv. If you salvage them, they will be always weak because the tendon was tensioned into a deformed position. So it will not be ideal. So that's a very important point. In so those are my tips and tricks for the Ponceli method, thank you. Any questions? Yes. Sometimes, if, regarding casting, sometimes I get to a point where I feel the tower has is covered, but I can't abduct anymore, and it looks like the abduction is not enough. Is this a good point to have a tonotomy? It's a good question, because a lot of people have doubts on how, what's the limit. And I think you have to, tell a head is covered, that means that you should have no varus. Okay, because that means that subtalar joint has completely corrected and all the equinos from the subtalar joints you, you had accomplished, okay? So sometimes I cannot abduct anymore. I mean, if you're 70, you don't need to. And if you're not there, please check your hand because you, your finger could be a little down. It's very, very often to see and then you're blocking the calcaneus to go. So I cannot go. And you, I say, send some pictures, and your finger will be a little lateral. So if you're blocking the calcaneus, you won't be able to go anymore. So I think it, it, this is a technical issue. Of course, uh, it could be a fusion. It's very rare, but it could be a fusion uh, or a coalition or something like that, but it's very rare. So most often, it's like you're just blocking your abduction with a finger a little down. It's, it's a millimeter in a baby, so it's very, very common to happen. Continue the same question. Sometimes it's really, if you, if, you, if you do it properly, you're still stuck in abduction. You perform through the forecast, you get mild abduction, you cannot, you cannot progress with abduction. So in this case, what is the time that you perform a killer Will you insist to do more three or four casts, or you will do, you do it after, let's say, you try, if you don't progress, to try another two or three casts and then to perform tenotomy? I found that if I did 
if I did two street casting I will, if, and I'm not progressing with the abduction, Achilles stenotomy can perform, re, can improve really the abduction in the, after the, when, after the, the, when I perform the Achilles stenotomy. Well, that's a very dangerous uh, saying, I would say, because if you're not abduction enough, the foot will go on the dorsiflexion, right? But it may, you may be smashing the tailor's head. So you have to be sure that you're abducting. And I, I, I'll, I'll, re, I'll put again this, that you have to be able to, to see, your, to, to criticize yourself, taking pictures, having someone to, to film you, and to look at what you're doing. And the other thing is photographs, okay? So you have to, to that's why I like Pirani score. They don't do it in Iowa very much, but I like Pirani score because you analyze if you're stuck on the points that matter, okay? And the family is with you following, so they count the points, and so it's cool also. But you see, and for the grown-ups, and I'm gonna talk about it in the afternoon, uh, it's crucial that you have uh, documentation if you're progressing or not, because if you're not, you have to stop, reanalyze, pass the case to somebody else, discuss the case, do something, or change the technique if you're alone in the world. <laughs> so you can pull, move on to surgery or X fix or whatever. But the thing is that you have to be analyzing and why you st you're stuck, okay? And it could be a fusion, but it's very, very uh, rare. So it's mostly the problem with the technique. And uh, uh, my advice is like, be together as a group. This Israeli group is very, very tight, and uh, you don't have long distances as we do here in, in my back home. So get together. So get on web conferencing and try to do the Ponset Israeli uh, group and to work together because those questions will, little by little, will be just fitting in you. You get more confident that you're doing a good job. Second question is about the gallus anterior tendon transfer. Do you always cast before the, the, the surgery? Because I'm not sure that anyone in the audience does it here. Like I'm not doing it here. Always, 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 Why? always cast. <laughs> Why? If I get if I get the same, very, well, actually in tendon transfer, I actually I, I actually correct the midfoot, mainly the midfoot and the hind foot as well but mainly the midfoot. If I get a result, a good result, without casting, without recasting, why to do that? I tell you why. The cast will melt the foot into more flexibility. That, that will help your transfer, okay? And if you're doing the transfer, it means that for some reason the foot is coming in, okay? Or because it's dynamic, or sometimes, as it's in the book, Dr. Mosetti, you, you can do it because of uh, frequent relapses, okay, two or three relapsed. So it means that the foot is kind of tight, okay, and you just undo it. And those kids, I have six now of those kids that were transferred, and it's very bad to get out of this. So why not to stretch a little bit? Some, some kids are flexible, you go one cast or two casts, but most of them are not that flexible, and those are those kids that you see, the transfer is beautiful, and there, okay? And also happens with the, the hemi tendon transfers, okay? We're gonna discuss this on the... On the Mark, give me a sign. <laughs>